Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Philosophy of Art and Science podcast. As always, if you support this program, you can head over to patreon.com slash tawahado. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash t-e-w-a-h-i-d-o. And if you don't get hives when reading, you could head over to aksum.substack.com. That's A-K-S-U-M dot substack.com. Today, my guest again is Deacon Ala Masalasi. Welcome back to the program, brother. Thank you. May God grant you health and longevity. So today we are looking at some of the readings of Qaddist, the second week of the Great Fast. Qaddist, of course, means holy, and you'll get to that, of course. But I think the main focus is the Psalms. And on this channel, I have a lot of Psalms on the YouTube channel. That is, uh, I know this audio actually gets to other platforms that that don't share that. But at least on the YouTube, I have this Amhara Constructional where I, I'm going through the Psalms. I've completed the first 10 already. And that's from a pure language perspective, just teaching people Amharic using the Psalms. And now with you, I'm trying to get people to hear the Psalms in the, the language of the church, which is the Zema, the melody, but then get the theological perspective that, that you're going to offer from your theological studies and your time in, in the church. So the main psalm here is 95 in the Old Greek and 96 in the Masoretic text or the Hebrew. And it's, it, it, it's never just one verse, you know, or I should say it's usually not because there could be some cases on the outliers. But this is verses 5 to 6 roughly. Here's the King James Version. It says, for all the gods of the nations are idols, but the main part begins with but. But the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Then we have the Lexham English Septuagint, and usually the Septuagint or the Old Greek is closer to what the Giz is. The Lord made the heavens. Thanksgiving and beauty are before him. Holiness and majesty are in his sanctuary. Even this, it's not going to be word for word exactly the same as the good is, and, and we could get into that. And finally, I'll read the Amharic and then pass the mic over to Deacon Adam Masalasi. Exyab hirgen samayatin sarra, msgana wubet bafituno. Kadusanet nagirma bamakdasu wist nacho. So go ahead and, and present your slideshow for us so everyone at home, at least watching the video can see, those who are hearing this in the audio only format will not get that benefit. So it's it's beautiful and and great to get the audio so you can listen to it in your car and on the go. And, and I put it in audio version because people have made that recommendation for me and I was slipping for not having it before. But those who get to sit at home and pay full attention in video, get the added bonus, uh, added bonus and benefit of Deacon Adam Asalasi's slideshow here. Go ahead and tell us about Qaddist and this psalm. Okay, can you hear me? Badam. Okay, so this is, the, as you said, the second, the theme of the second Sunday of the Great Fast, Abiz Om, uh, and, and it's titled Qaddist, and we're going to look at how that theme is tied in through the uh, the readings from the Eucharistic liturgy or the Qaddasi and um, the Psalm uh, of Qaddasi. Uh, we're, we will begin with uh, singing the Psalm. Um, and here uh, I have um, the, the Gitzawi is a bit confusing because it has about four, four or for five. The, for those who don't know, let them know what the uh, Gitzawi is. The Gitzawi is uh, what, a lexicon? It's the, the the lectionary or the the schedule of readings for every Sunday and, and indeed every day of the year. So you're saying the way it was written there was harder to read. So for those who don't know, here, uh, my man is not only a physicist, not only a master of theology, and <laughs> not only a singer in the church, but here he is using his, his own scribal techniques to present the writing for those watching the visuals. So, th so um, since the uh, the lexicon will will have uh, four different ways to sing this psalm, um, I wanted to write out 
uh, my preference and uh, also practice um, the manuscript tradition that um, we've laid claim to. And so here we have Xiavihir, Sa, Samayata, Gabra, Amin, was a knight, Kadimihu, Kadisat, whatever you have had, was Tamakadasu. Xiavihir, Sa, Samayata, Gabra. Amin was her night. Oh, good. What or what So as you said, this is Psalm 95, 5 through 6. And although <clears throat> there, there are several ways to look at the translation, the, the Giz translation is essentially the Lord made the heavens. Truth and beauty are before him. Holiness and great glory are in his sanctuary. So it, in the Psalms, um, glory or the uh, Semitic root uh KBR or Kavr um, or Sivhat, the, these are related themes. And um, holiness, which is the theme of the whole uh, second Sunday, because uh, the even the name of this Sunday is Kadist, the theme is holiness. And we'll also see as a secondary theme glory um, within the reading. So the in the Eucharistic liturgy in the Gaddafi, the Pauline reading will be 1 Thessalonians 4, 1 through 13. And um, in this epistle, Paul urges that uh, we walk in the way that the apostles have shown. Uh, he says, as you have received from us, you ought to walk and please God. So he's talking about... Um, the, the implication here is fasting and and the uh, secondary you know implications may be the the liturgical uh, life and so on and he goes on to say that the will of God is your sanctification or your holiness which is again the main theme of this Sunday and he says san holiness or sanctification um they're the same thing um is a is reached through uh, possessing the body in honor and not in lust um, like those who do not know God. So to know God is to exercise um, uh, control over one's body, to um, uh, discipline the body. And of course, the, the understanding here is through fasting. This is the scriptural understanding of even Paul says, to bring the body into subjugation uh, through fasting and prayer. And um, he says that the will of God entirely, the entire will of God is the sanctification, is your sanctification. And a rejection of this is actually a rejection of the gospel itself in its entirety. Um, he says this is the summary of the gospel, that your whole being be brought into, um, be brought, the whole essence of the human person is uh, the, the body, the body, the embodiment is the, is, is the, un, is, you know, one of the essential factors of existence, Sex, the, the, the sexual sexuality, which also um, is brought up in all these readings is the essence of the, of the human being. And so, um, 
we'll see in the gospel reading that even this is beyond like rules. So the fasting, the the concept of fasting is it goes beyond rules and regulations, but it is uh, an under. It, it, the point is to bring the whole being of the person uh, into um, un, uh, un, under the rule of the spirit. And so he urges also here to the Thessalonians modesty in life. He talks about leading a quiet life, minding your business and engaging in honest gain, honest work. And Peter, the um, the universal readings from uh, will are are from Peter in in this uh, on this Sunday, and um, Peter urges uh, his his the listeners to rejoice although they've been grieved uh by many trials um because of the faith that has been tried will be shown during christ's revelation for praise honor and glory and um we saw in the psalms the the term the word glory also the second this is the uh, another thread in the readings is glory and um, at the manifestation of Christ in the second coming, um, those who have withstood um, the trials and tribulations will be found for praise, honor, and uh, 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 glory coming out of suffering as um, victorious through uh, suffering. So he also here uh, asks, um, exhorts the the, uh, the audience to rejoice in Christ, whom they do not see, but whom they know, whom they know mystically uh, through being united in through the mysteries of the church. And this is also uh, the body, the body of the church is, is Christ's body. And, and this is again, um, uh, sanctification, um, uh, w which is required before coming into unity with, um, it is coming into unity with Christ. And so this is the, we're talking about, again, the body. This is another thread uh, in sanctification because sanctification is bringing the whole being under uh, the rule of the spirit, one's whole uh, existence. Um, mind, body, soul, and um, he says, therefore, collect your mind, be holy, and conduct your stay here in fear uh, because the, the Father judges without uh, partiality and judges all according to to what they have done according to their actions. And um, he finally exhorts the audience to love one another fervently. And he summarizes like, like Paul did, uh, that this is the whole teaching of the gospel. So that one would be holy and one, and essentially one would love his neighbor fervently is the entirety of the gospel and on this sunday um on this second sunday the we see here through both of these readings the main theme being the sanctification of of the body and then the uh liturgy of the word uh culminates in the gospel readings the gospel reading of Matthew 6, uh, verse 16 through 23. And these are uh, split into three. Uh, one is, he, is about fasting. Uh, verse 16 through 18 are about fasting on how the, the goal of fasting is to bring, is, is to elicit a reaction from God. And he says, do not advertise your fasting, Christ's teachings here uh, say, do not advertise your fasting because it, it is essentially between you and God. And so he says, do not let no, people know that you're fasting. 
So he says, take care of your appearance. Do not appear um, um, disheveled. And um, this is because the, the point of fasting is to elicit a response. Fasting is um, bringing your whole, your whole being uh, into action. It's a spiritual action and it elicits a, a, a reaction from God. So he says, your father who sees you in secret will reward you in, uh, openly. So it, it, it's redirecting the, um, the goal because um, it is, he, he is teaching his followers to avoid um, the appearances and, and, and the surface level aspects of fasting. And so um, this en encourages the person that's fasting to um, engage not only in the dietary rules, but in the inner, the inner life that the that the fasting period is trying to revive because the, the the point of fasting is simplicity of life the second on treasures is this turning this turning away and into the inner life that fasting aids um allows us to lay up treasures heavenly treasures and those are virtues and righteous um uh actions and uh which culminate in the sanctification of our souls which is again sanctification is, and holiness is the point of the main theme of this sunday and um and so these are the treasures that one should be uh, aiming for that one should be striving for in life and here it says um to lay these heaven, the, 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 these uh, treasures up for ourselves in the heavenly places, and to turn away from um, too to, uh, too strong of a focus on material treasures. The third is the lamp of the eye, um, and t guarding the senses is essentially he he talks about how to that the eye should fast essentially and um because the senses elicit uh, uh, a, res a response uh, a internal response and they and abstaining from seeing and hearing or abstaining and guarding the senses is um an important way when one is fasting to guard the internal the movement of the uh uh, of the internal life, which is engaged in prayer and um, and uh, virtue during the period of fasting. May God have you hear his word of life. And just to add on, the holiness and the sanctuary are interesting because in Hebrew, like in Ge'ez, and in Arabic for that matter, the word for holy, kudus, the vowels change when you go from Semitic language to Semitic language. But the base root there, just how you discussed kubr being KBR, how that's similar across the languages. Kudus, QDS in various forms, although some people write it K and that's okay, they're wrong, unless they put some weird linguistic mark on it to let us know it's a little bit different than a normal K. But this QDS is the same root. So various English translations will use word like saint or holy one, saints, sanctuary, holy place, all of these things, holiness, sanctification. These are all the same thing. They they take that that base little root and all these words are, are built upon them. So all the things that Deacon Adam Masalasi said about holiness are they're increased when you see them in, in the original language because the same word is used. And so the, the reader and the hearer feel attacked because the same word is being used against them. And that's kind of like a, a whip or whatever tool a parent would use when uh, corporal punishment was allowed to make sure that they're recalcitrant 
and disobedient child will begin to listen to them. It's why American children are always saying, oh, mom, dad, you sound like you're a broken record. Well, you sound like a broken record because you're not listening. The, the words are going in the ears, but they're not doing it. So we've been told so many times through scripture, through liturgy, that we should be more holy, and yet we aren't doing it. And so because we're not doing it, that's why we keep seeing these words popping up. And then the second thing, whether it's the fasting that he mentioned or viewing God as glory, when we go back to the Lord, but the Lord made the heavens, if you go back to Psalm 95 slash 96, what but is there to do is to contrast the Lord making the heavens with the gods of the nations who are not gods at all, right, but idols. So the gods of the nations being idols cannot hear, cannot do anything. But the God who has no statue, the God who is the living God, makes the heavens. And therefore, all of the holiness and fasting that we do is because we are wedded to this God and we are not to commit that sexual immorality he mentioned, not as an individual, but as a community with these other gods. Rather, we are to follow the one God and we are the beautiful bride of that even more beautiful, uh, as that word sun night we saw earlier, even more beautiful bridegroom when we are participating in this communal fasting and looking at our inner selves and trying to improve our, you know, our community with, as the Proverbs say, iron sharpening iron as one man or one person sharpens another. And so him and I are showing just by our togetherness, by our sitting down, how good and pleasant a thing it is, as the psalmist says elsewhere, when brothers sit down in unity and get to, to dwell on the word, you could expect more of these psalms. I'm not going to give you a strict schedule. Maybe Deacon Alam Masalasi will, will tell you or announce anything else. Do you have any concluding thoughts on, on this psalm or this kind of journey that we're going to be partaking on? This is the first of many, I hope to say, but I will not put a number to it. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, uh, it, it it's surprising how the readings of this Sunday are equating the whole gospel with being holy, uh, with possessing your body, um, and and your whole essence, your sexuality, um, it's scathing. Uh, uh, and so I think you know we all when we hear when we hear this, it's um, it's it, like you said, it's an attack because he both Paul, uh, Peter and Paul equate the whole gospel with being sanctified, with being holy, and um, and then the gospel reading equates fasting with disciplining the body in order that you may turn into an internal an internal mode of a spiritual mode uh, and so it, it discourages us from even getting caught up in the dietary um uh because the dietary some of some, some we can get caught up in the dietary rules but the prayer life is lacking and and the prayer life doesn't grow during the the fasting season but here directly the, the Christ's teachings are that the external um, rules of fasting, the whole point is that to bring one into an encounter, bringing your being into an account an encounter with the uh, ultimate being, the, um, trin the the triune God. And uh, th those are just my concluding remarks. Um, hopefully we can keep these. Uh, coming through the whole uh, uh, Lent Lenten season, and look at uh, all of the Psalms, and um, that will give me an opportunity to uh, practice these the the scribal tradition more, and uh, it'll force me to pay attention to uh, how well I I know them myself. The 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 Psalms that is wonderful, and I hope that these videos will inspire more scribes and more people playing with the Psalms 
ወስብሃት ለእግዚአብሔር